The death of the Silver Surfer is covered in a story called Silver Surfer Requiem, and it's the most beautiful story that has ever been published in the history of Marvel Comics, objectively, right? Not even any kind of bias here. It really just is. And the story follows the Silver Surfer when he originally arrives on Earth and visits the Fantastic Four. And for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the history of the Surfer, the Fantastic Four, Galactus, things like that, we'll talk more about that as we get to this story because he does kind of travel around Earth for a little while. He visits Doctor Strange and uh, Spider-Man. But whenever the Surfer shows up, up nine times out of ten it's to summon reed richards and to say like galactus wants to talk to you in this instance it doesn't happen he basically just tells reed richards i need to speak to you alone and this leads of course to the surfer and reed talking now of course susan storm is there because as the wife of reed she's with him on everything and we don't really get a whole lot initially in terms of what's going on it's more straczynski dropping hints about what's happening in the sense that Johnny Storm and the Thing Ben Grimm are kind of talking together and the questions asked like what in the world were Surfer and Reed and, and Susan discussing and all that's really said is that Susan was just crying right like she was never going to stop crying and so what you get is this moment where Reed Richards is kind of conducting this experiment on the Silver Surfer and he talks about how of course it's painful things like that but in order to truly understand what's going on, they have to continue the process. And of course, Silver Surfer allows him to continue. And so following that, you pick up with Reed when he's meeting with Susan the following morning, where she'd fallen asleep at the table, it's like 9 a.m. And he kind of gives us a little bit of a statement where he says like, after all the tests, ultimately we discovered that like, it's conclusive, right? The Silver Surfer is basically dying. And again, while they don't really say it in so many words, Susan asks the question, does he know? And the response of Reed is, yes, the Surfer knows. And this is when you go into one of the cool moments where you get a little bit of like a refresher for the backstory of the Silver Surfer, because this does not take place in the main Marvel Universe. It's an alternate reality. But because it was treated as a miniseries in trade, kind of an original graphic novel, that a lot of people could just pick it up, but wouldn't really know a lot about the surfer so of course giving them an origin made a whole lot of sense and for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with it as most people who read comics are aware the surfer was a guy named Norn Rad who existed on a planet called Zen Law and Zen Law was basically a world where they had effectively explored everything there was to explore right they're wildly advanced and over time they started doing away with like gods and deities and things like that and just started focusing largely on science and that was really it but what you saw over over the years is that because they had sort of lost their drive for exploration because they had seen everything there was to see people started turning inwards in a variety of different ways but then galactus shows up on the scene to what is by all standards of measurement a stagnant world and of course galactus intends to consume zen law in order to satiate his existence norn rad of course strikes a bargain with galactus in saying if you spare my world, then I will become your herald. Instead of you expending all this energy traveling the cosmos to find worlds to satiate your appetite, I will go out into the universe, I will find those worlds for you, and I will bring you to them. And so, of course, that led to Norn Rad becoming the Silver Surfer, and then within this universe, it led to uh, Zen Law being spared. But Norn Rad, as he had existed, was effectively wiped away, right? Like all his memories and his experiences, it all just kind of disappeared, or at least it was suppressed. And in turn, he became the Silver Surfer, traveling the cosmos, bringing Galactus to various worlds. And I wouldn't go so far as to call him a villain. I would simply just call him a tool that was used by Galactus to achieve a goal. But one of the things that he says is, then came Earth and something in the spirit of her people touched me in a way nothing else had. Their stubborn nobility in the face of certain death shamed me. They refused to be beaten down like a tall grass beneath a storm. Four stood alone against the terror that was Galactus, as once I had done, and in doing, they awoke what little remained of Norn Rad. And so what happened in Marvel Comics, again, this alternate reality sort of following the main Marvel Universe history of the Silver Surfer is that he helped the Fantastic Four 
overthrow or at least defeat Galactus. And as a result of this, he was basically locked on Earth and he was stuck there. He couldn't leave. Now in Marvel Comics, that was the original solo series of the Silver Surfer and it was wildly popular. But that's why he says, in that moment, I turned against him and we arose in strength in that most desperate hour. The price paid was terrible, but for the first time, Galactus was turned aside. On that day, Richards returned a little of the mortal Norn Rad to the Silver Surfer. From that day to this, I have seen things, done things that are nearly beyond imagination, things that would fill a thousand mortal lives. I have explored the darkness between the stars, seen the rise and fall of vast civilizations, done my best to atone for my past by bringing words of peace to the planet that had known only the language of war, all too often without success. But I regret nothing. And now, Reed Richards was there at the rebirth of Norn Rad. It is only right that he should be there now at the other end of that equation. I regret nothing, and neither should you. You have done all you could. And this is him speaking directly to the Fantastic Four. And really, Reed and Susan take it as, I wouldn't say a personal failure. Of course, there is the idea that like there was maybe something that Reed could have figured out, but the reality of what was going on here is the kind of skin, if we want to call it that, that makes up the Silver Surfer, right? Just being as advanced as it is, is far beyond anything that Reed Richards can even comprehend. There's no way that he could ever create a Silver surfer of his own and so without the ability to effectively understand the very makeup of the surfer there's no real way for him to fix or cure the surfer and so the result of this is that faced with his own impending demise the surfer decides to basically travel earth what he calls his adopted home and you get one of these incredibly beautiful moments here because what happens is the question is asked what was it that Reed said to the Silver Surfer and what's going on? And what Reed told him is he said, the material that covers your body protects you from the cold of space and the heat of stars and from radiation and pain and the loss of oxygen. And it's the most elaborate mechanism ever created, especially given that it's only a few microns deep but no mechanism, no machine lasts forever. This one is starting to break down because it's tied directly into your nervous system. As it begins to malfunction, so will you. The symptoms will be minor at first, dizziness, confusion, shortness of breath. At times, your abilities may fail you altogether. You may experience brief blackouts. As it worsens, there will be pain and a lot of it. At times, it will feel as though every nerve in your body has gone nova. Then finally, paralysis. First of the limbs, then the lungs will stop, the heart will stop, and you will die. And so when the question is asked, how long do I have? The response of Reed is about a month or so. And that's really being liberal with your time frame. The reality here is we're looking at maybe two or three weeks. And instead of the surfer just sort of falling into this state of depression, being told quite literally by the universe's smartest man, you are dying. Instead, he says that as he understands it on earth, monarch butterflies only live about two weeks and those two weeks are a generation. So if he only has a month to live, he's lived two generations. And so it's finding, no pun intended, the silver lining in the midst of all of this. And so as he goes and as he travels the earth, he comes across Spider-Man. Now, Spider-Man is, of course, doing Spider-Man stuff and, you know, engaging in some kind of a skirmish. And ultimately, you know, Silver Surfer just basically takes care of it right, right on the spot. Kind of crazy when you have that level of power. But it is this instance where he kind of explains to Spider-Man to a degree what's going on. And Peter Parker, being as smart as he is, offers his assistance here. But the reality is that the Silver Surfer isn't really looking for a cure anymore. That he's really just kind of accepted his fate. And ultimately, he says, I've been thinking that there must be something I can do for your world before I leave. I have been here for so long enjoying its beauty and confused by the brutality of your people towards one another. You are all the same species. You have the same goals, the same dreams, the same fears. You eat the same food and sleep the same sleep. So you have to go out of your way to divide yourselves, to make it easier to kill one another. Boundaries, nations, blocks, creeds, names, fashion. You kill one another 
for a pair of sneakers. And he says, your leaders oppress and exploit you for their own power, and you allow it happily if in doing so they can kill those you have decided are not like you. You are a race of madmen. And he says, I keep thinking that there must be something I can do, some way I can fix this before I go. But there is nothing, nothing I can do. Now, what's really interesting here is the idea is toyed around with that the Silver Surfer can use his power to basically wipe out all forms of weaponry that exist on Earth, that he can eliminate all these tools and arms and armament that humanity would use to destroy one another. But the point that's made here is that's fighting the symptom, it's not fighting the illness. That what's really happening here is nations with borders are created, right? Tribes wage war against one another, people fight each other over religious differences because they fail to see the commonality in one another. And so what you get is this kind of momentary test where Spider-Man is just sort of sitting there and he says, this is why we mainly just fight the bad guys one at a time. Because it's one thing to stop a bad guy from doing evil when we can agree on what evil is, but it's something else to try to change how people are. You could, and so Spider-Man says, since nothing else is working, I have to ask because I've always wondered, why the surfboard? <laughs> I mean, you don't think it's kind of like hokey. And you get this really cool moment, right, where the Silver Surfer says that it's not really a surfboard in the traditional sense. Like, I don't need food or air or oxygen or anything along those lines. I only need something that will carry me where it is that I have to go. Form follows function. So why not just have a surfboard? And the question asked by Peter is, I mean, why not a car, right? Or like a small ship, right? Like, why have a board? And you get this really cool response where he says, like, imagine the depths of space, not just miles beneath and above and beside you, but whole galaxies. Imagine standing in the limitless darkness between the stars with nothing between you and the universe. Imagine being able to move through that majesty unfettered, unencumbered, free, the beauty, the terrible majesty beauty all around you. Thus freed even once would you ever wish to surround yourself with a shell again and deny yourself that beauty. And it's a really, really cool statement that he's making here because imagine that you woke up tomorrow and you had the ability to fly. Would you be willing to give that up? If you could fly from here to anywhere in the world, fly south for the winter like birds, would you want to get back into a car again? Absolutely not, because once you felt that air on your skin, once you smelled the air as you were flying through, you would never want to give any of that stuff up. And the reality here is that Silver Surfer feels so disconnected from the universe around him that being able to travel through the universe is one of the few ways in which he can actually feel a part of it. And so Spider-Man gets this realization where he's like, I can kind of imagine what you're saying, but at the same time, I cannot, right? I can't really picture that because I don't have that ability. And so what he does is he goes and he gets Mary Jane Watson because it's technically her birthday. And what he asked the Silver Surfer to do is give her a ride on his surfboard, which he does, right? She rides this board and he gives her basically a portion of his power cosmic so she doesn't die in the vacuum of space. The board takes her out there and for a brief moment, she experiences and sees the universe the way he does. She comes to grips with her place in this vast cosmos, this infinitely expanding universe. And when she arrives back, she's in absolute tears because for the first time, she feels more connected to everything in existence than she has at any point before. And that's when the idea dawns to Spider-Man, Silver Surfer could do this for humanity. He tells him, if there's any one thing that you really wish you could do for the human race, it's changing hearts and minds of human beings, but not by showing them what they're doing wrong, but by showing them what they have in common, showing humanity what they could be. And so for a brief moment, enough that it doesn't overwhelm their minds, the Silver Surfer provides the entirety of the human race with cosmic awareness. For the first time in human history, the whole human race is not just connected to each other, they're connected with the universe. They see galaxies, they see stars being consumed by black holes, stars going supernova, every race out there all doing 
something. They experience what it means to be part of this wildly advanced and huge and intricate and beautiful universe, each part with its own just sort of facet and function out there, that they're just one tiny part of this massive expansion of life. And so while it would in some ways show humanity how small they are, it also shows humanity how fragile they are. Now we don't get to see where this leads humanity. We don't really get any of that. Instead, the Silver Surfer ultimately leaves, right? And what ends up happening here is as he takes off, he ends up coming across Doctor Strange. And in fact, Doctor Strange meets him out there and he says, right, like in talking with everybody, especially those within the magical community, we got word of what was going on. There is nothing that we can do to cure you. So what I do here is I provide you with this gift. This flame holds every ounce of knowledge that has ever existed in the history of the human race from the first time that we walked upright to this moment right now. But that knowledge is split into two categories, right? Two kind of eras before you arrived and after you arrived so that you can truly understand the impact that you had on our world, that you can truly grasp how your purpose or your, your presence affected the lives of people that you've never met, never seen, and never talked to. And it's this incredibly beautiful gift because so often, right, six degrees of separation, right, you're walking through an airport, you meet somebody. Through that six degrees, you quote unquote know or have met a person on the other side of the world. But with Norrin Rad, his very presence here, saving the Earth from extinction at the hands of Galactus, inspiring Earth's superheroes by bringing knowledge from beyond the stars, right, showing them what other worlds are like and what other people are like and so on, kind of ushering in what some might call this new golden age of superheroism on Earth, that it had a massive impact. And so this incredible and beautiful gift is of course taken by the Silver Surfer and absorbed into his body. So that when those times come, when he questions, when he asks, like, did I have any real measurable impact on anything that ultimately he can consult that knowledge given to him and he can remind himself the effect that he's had on the world. And so what you do is there is a kind of moment where he comes across an alien race. Honestly, it doesn't really add much to the story. It's okay. But what it does, at least what we're going to do is we're gonna jump to the point when he goes back to Zen Law, when he goes back home. And when he arrives here, it had been so long since he got there. And the first person he sees is Shala Ball, the woman that he was in love with before he became the Silver Surfer. And he says that he's coming back here because he wanted to know that they lived. He wanted to know that they survived. But even as advanced as the citizens of Zen La are, they cannot cure him. They cannot fix him because he is struggling with what you and I would refer to as basically cancer, right? That's what's killing the Silver Surfer. And so even then, right, when Shalabal says, even though there's nothing we can do, it's not to say that there's nothing we can try. And so what he does is he stops Shalabal, right? As she's kind of advocating on his behalf, like, no, we have to find a way to keep him alive, right? To save the man I love. He says, no, though it was a part of my decision, if you believe I came all this way just to die, then you do not understand. I came also to know that you live, to see you alive so that I may carry that vision across with me when the darkness comes. And he says, when we die, we take comfort in knowing that those we love will continue for as many tomorrows as the universe can give us. It is a joy. Would you take that from me at this hour, my last source of joy? And her response is, of course, no, right? Like in this moment, I would not do anything to take away any happiness from you. And that's when he says, then live for me and live without regret. Live a life that brings happiness to you. That's all that matters. And he says, because I do not regret a moment spent living for you and for our people. And so what happens is that over a period of time, which doesn't really seem to be specified, word spreads that Norn Rad has returned 
but that Nornrad is dying. And with the citizens of Zen Law knowing the sacrifice that Nornrad made, becoming the Silver Surfer, in order to save their world, people come far and wide from all over the place to basically give their thanks, right? To say, like, it was because of you that we were saved. And so what you get is this really cool moment where it says, and as they passed and touched his hand, they came away with something more. It would be called the Mark of Norn. In years to come, whenever there was anger or rage or violence, the Mark would turn colors to remind them of the man who had made peace his cause, his life, and who had ultimately died in its service. It was not always enough, but it was enough most of the time. If any man, any living creature, can claim a greater legacy in death than that, let him come forth. And so while they're there and everybody is paying their respects to Norrin, Galactus arrives on the scene. And initially, people are terrified. People are filled with fear at the arrival of Galactus because his arrival means basically death, destruction. And there is a part of the Zenlavian citizenship who believe that now that Norrin Rad is dying, Galactus is taking his chance to finally consume Zen Law, right? Like, to consume this world. But instead, when he arrives, he greets the Silver Surfer as a friend. And he says, word has reached my ears to what's happening with you. I do not know that I can save you, but I can try. And the response of Norn Rad is, no. There is a time and a place for everything. And in time, everything has to come to an end. Nothing is meant to live forever. Even the universe itself will end, and it'll be reborn into something new. And so what ends up happening is the Silver Surfer makes a request of Galactus. And Galactus, of course, knowing his mind, immediately honors it. And he says, I will honor this request, Silver Surfer. I will honor what you ask of me. He says, I would never allow anyone to harm the world that was the heart and soul of the most honorable being I have ever known. Right? I will protect this world from now until the ending of the universe. Your people will always be safe. And so it's the best gift because you get this beautiful moment where Norn Rad essentially succumbs to death, right? Like he officially dies. And so for like three days, Galactus stands guard during this entire point of mourning, watching over everything. And he never leaves. Right? Like, he never goes anywhere. It's the level of respect he had for the man that he considered to be his friend. And so, as a result of all of this, Shalabal says, Galactus, if you would truly honor he who was my love and my heart and my life, then I would ask something of you. And without hesitation, Galactus says, make your request. And that request will be honored. And so what ends up happening is Galactus takes Nornrad with him into the sky, right? Like outside the planet, out into space, and then fires him off and turns him into a star so that all these different races whom Nornrad had impacted in some capacity would all name their gods or their deities or something or what have you after that star. But every living being, every sentient being in the universe would know of this star's existence. And in that way, Norn Rad would live on forever until the ending of the universe. But it is this, this is the end of the story, but it's just this beautiful, incredible story that is so emotional and so touching. Yeah, I, I, I love Silver Surfer Requiem and I just, I felt compelled to cover this. Like I really, really did because it's just such a beautiful story. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this to an end and I will catch you all later. Peace.